Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, that means you you haven't been watching much TV because we're on like all the time. No, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, my day job, I'm an attorney at Myra O'Connell. We we're actually right here in uh, Westboro, beautiful Westboro. Um, but this is not about my day job. This is really about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen uh, any of my presentations before, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means Westboro, that means right here. So the point of the show is if you're like Frank and Mary and you want to stay right here, who do you need to know? What are the programs you need to know about? So my great um, uh, co-host is Shelby Marshall, whom like everybody knows, right, it seems. Um, and and she is always in charge of finding these great guests, although I see a familiar face this week. So whom do we have today, Shelby? Yeah, a, a, fam a familiar face that we know and certainly the town knows. So really happy uh, that our town manager, Christy Williams, is, is our guest today. So Christy, welcome back. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. So Arthur, I asked Christy to join us because as uh, Frank and Mary know, and you know, uh, we have a town meeting coming up on Saturday, November 7th at 10 a.m. at Westboro High School. This is our special fall town meeting. We typically have it in October, but because of COVID and yada, 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 um, uh, we've, uh, we're have we having it in November. And, uh, you know, that thing called the elections and it's been a little bit busy around town. So um, I asked Christy to come on to give us an update on really, you know, things that obviously Frank and Mary care about. The budget, how much are my taxes going to go up, you evil government people? How much are you going to tax me more to live in this town for services that I know I really appreciate, but I don't want to really pay for? And, you know, and Christy looks like such an ogre, too, you know? I know. <laughs> She's just the epitome of that kind of, like, True. evil government, you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so. Right. So we're going to talk about that and then we'll then we'll look and we'll talk a little bit about the town warrant, um, which, you know, of course, is what we follow during town meeting. And then we'll look ahead to FY22 and, and Christy's going to pull out her crystal ball and talk to us about uh, that. So, Christy, uh, again, welcome. Um, uh, talk to us about the FY21 budget and what Frank and Mary care about. Sure. Um, so I did. I was on the show several months ago talking about um, the impacts of COVID and um, particularly the economic impacts of COVID. So you know some of the ways that the town obviously revenue in addition to taxes is through local receipts. So um, restaurants and hotels and things like that. So we certainly those industries were impacted by COVID, and so we had to take that into account as we looked at our FY21 budget. Um, when we went to town meeting in June, um, we were predicting that our FY21 budget would um, create a $457 increase to the average single family, um, which would be an average tax bill of $10,232. Um, we actually worked really hard to get to that number because pre-COVID, that was where we were at. That's what we anticipated going to the March town meeting with. Um, and so we were really proud to be able to get back to that number. Um, but I have even better news because um you know with that number came out of um certainly changing our estimates on the local receipts but also estimating that our state um aid would would go down and so um the legislature and the, the governor um, are committed to level funding our state aid, which means that um, some of the estimates, some of the things that we thought might happen, some of the reductions we thought might happen, actually have, are not going to happen in FY21. Um, and so prior to the November um, town meeting, um, we are actually now estimating a $197 increase to the taxes. Um, however, because we did so many things with the budget to um, you know, to get to that $457 number. Um, and because we held off on some of the purchases because we didn't really know what was gonna happen with COVID, um, some of the articles on the town meeting warrant will impact the taxes. And so um, assuming everything passes at town meeting, um, the in increase to the average single family will be $228. So it's down from the $457 that we were originally anticipating. Um, and so, you know, we're very happy to be able to share that news. Um, so and as a I member of the Board of Selectmen, I'd like to take full credit for that. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> and I was just kind of quickly doing those numbers in my head. And as a percentage of what people are paying in taxes, that's not a gigantic increase. If your typical bill is about $10,000 and you're going up, what is that, about 2%? It's like Yeah, it's 2.3% increase. 
That's yeah. great. That's great. I mean, because and I think people really, uh, you know, maybe it's just me, but I think people really come to appreciate town services over the last six months, you know, because they've got it you know, from both the police and the fire and so many, and you know, whoever knew the health people before this? Right. <laughs> and, and now they're a big deal and they've really been helpful, you know? Yeah. So it's just a lot easier to take. I'm just make this as an observation as a friend of Frank and Mary, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And the town, and I, you know, I want to emphasize, Christy spoke to this when she was on several months ago, but um, the the collaboration, a lot of times Frank and Mary may not think that there's collaboration between the town and the schools. Tremendous collaboration allowed us to get to that. It re was really um, both um, budgets, if you will, were delivered on par in terms of their savings and reductions. Um, so uh, again, I just think it it speaks to the vision and the strategy and, and the collaboration, you know, at the highest levels within our, our government. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's really exciting. So so tell me and tell me about town meeting. So is this the replacement town meeting? So are they actually voting on this? They're not voting on this budget because the budget was already voted. Is everything? What what? Yeah, how good is, question. Yeah. yeah. So um right. So the budget was voted um, in June at town meeting, but we knew that we would have to revisit the budget in our regular fall town meeting, which is what this one is, the November town meeting. Um, and so our second article on the town meeting warrant is actually going to adjust several budgets. Um, so one is going to adjust the fire department budget. Um, it's going to increase the fire department budget about $56,000 um, because we settled contracts with that union. So that's about $7 impact on the average single family. Um, for the school department also settled contracts. So that's 59,000, also about $7 impact. Um, one of the things that we did on both the town and school side is we kept uh, vacant some positions that were already vacant. So a hiring freeze. Um, in looking at that, we would like to bring some of those positions back um, effective either December or January. So one position we think is really important, especially right now, is the economic development coordinator position. We want to make sure that people are that we're able to reach out to our businesses. Um, and so that position is um, is requested to be funded for six months. So it's thirty six thousand dollars or four dollar and fifty cents uh, to the average single family. Um, a public works labor position is about $15,000 or $2 to the tax bill. Um, one additional police officer position. So I'm sure everyone's heard Chief Lori. Um, you know, they had a staffing study done and initially in FY21, we were looking at adding three positions. Um, we didn't add any. And so this is a request to add one for the seven months of FY21. So that's $37,000 or $4.50. Um, and then we want to increase our legal budget. So we've talked a lot about the Eversource pipeline project and when they, whenever so that's supposed to come through uh, Westboro and there's some concern about that. And so once they file um, with the Department of Public Utility, um, we'll, we'll need those resources in our legal budget to, um, to help us uh, analyze that filing. Um, and then an, an $8,000 increase to the buildings and grounds budget. And that's really to, um, to board up the Regal Theater, um, something that, that has been talked about for a while in town because it's been vacant for a while. Um, and it's just a public safety um, issue and something that we want to board up. So those are all of the increases um, in Article 2. And then Article 15 is the only other one that will impact your taxes, and that's um, creating a community development director position, but we're actually going to elevate the building commissioner position. Um, so it's actually it's about five thousand dollars. So the total um, impact on taxes um, with this warrant would be about thirty one dollars to the average single family. So um, Christy, actually, just while we're talking about Regal, because I know folks um, are very interested in that uh, property and what's going on. So can you give Frank and Mary an update on it? Because what they'll also see is that we have an article uh, to rescind borrowing. And so they see this big, massive figure of $6 million on there. And it says Regal Cinema. So folks are going to think that potentially, like, what does that mean? We're not pursuing that anymore. Can you give uh, sure. them an update? Yep. So um a couple of years ago, the Board of Selectmen, or we had come to the town meeting and asked to be able to borrow $6 million um, because we had talked about 
taking the Regal Cinema by Eminent Domain. Um, the reason that we talked about that was because we couldn't locate an owner, and and we still can't locate an owner for the for the Regal Cinema. So the Board of Selectmen did go through a process, um, but at, just before the process really concluded, um, we did receive a claim on the property or a you know communication that there might be a claim on the property, and so at that point the Board of Selectmen. Um, you know, stopped pursuing the eminent domain route and really went through the typical tax title uh, process, which is the process that any property would go through um, for non-payment of taxes. And so that's really where we're at. We still don't, we still haven't identified the owner, um, but we're working through that process. It's a long process, um, but because we don't intend to take the property by eminent domain, we don't need that $6 million because that would have been intended for if we did take the property and then the owner came back to us and said, you know, that we owed them damages. So, yep. Yep. thank you, Kirsty. Appreciate that. Yep. So, a couple other uh, articles on the warrant that uh, might be of interest to folks. Um, the golf course has had a great year this year. Uh, there's an article to uh, change the management of that. Uh, tell Frank and Mary about that. Yep. So, um, so we have the Country Club Operating Committee, um, and they manage two contracts for the golf course. So, one is the actual golf manager contract. Um, and so that contract is expiring at the end of the calendar year. The person who's in that, uh, who we contract with is actually retiring. Um, and so for a couple of years, the Co Country Club Operating Committee has been looking at, um, does it make sense to continue with that model or does it make sense to move to an employee model where we would hire someone under the recreation department to manage the golf course? And that's the route that we've decided to take. So we've actually advertised the golf manager position. Um, and because of the way that the contract works versus having an employee, um, we do need to um, move money in the in the golf uh, in the golf or the country club budget. Um, and so the article on the warrant to do that is to move money out of retained earnings um, into the country club operating budget. And so that's not going to have an impact on the taxes. Great. Thank you. Um, any other articles? We've talked, um, Alan Edinburgh was a guest uh, not too long ago, actually twice now, talking about the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, so Frank and Mary are, are well versed in that already and, and understand those two articles that will be on the warrant um, and the importance of them. Christy, are there any other articles that you just want to uh, mention or highlight? Um. Sure. So we one of the things that we do every year at the annual town meeting is we fund um, capital projects. And so we have a process where we have a capital expenditure uh, planning committee that creates a five year capital plan. Um, and that's something that um, we put off uh, in this year's annual town meeting. We did fund a few of them that um, were immediate needs, but um, we put it off because we you know, consider we're considering the impacts of COVID. And so now, um, especially because we know that the state is level funding our aid, um, we've put forward all of the um, capital projects that were supposed to be on that annual town meeting warrant. So it's about half a million dollar investment in the town's capital needs as proposed. Um, that would be funded through free cash. So again, um, not an impact on your upcoming taxes. Um, and so, um, and we think it's really important, even though it's using free cash, um, we think it's really important to continue to invest in the town's capital needs because what we don't want to do is be in a position where we're spending more money on maintenance um, or we have emergency needs or um, we're sort of compounding our needs by pushing things off down the road. Right. And, and I'll add that we recently received, a, um, I don't want to use the wrong words here, Christy, but uh, an updated uh, um, bond rating um, um, and we're a AAA, uh, we have received a AAA rating. So um, in these times, very, very, um, you know, positive news it speaks to the amazing work of our finance team. So um, Westboro is in a really, really good place right now and we should feel very good about um, you know, our local government and the services and the ability to continue to provide all those at this time, which transitions us to FY22. Oh, yes, Arthur, please. No, I, no, I was just going to say, and by the way, this all speaks to, I think, the value of this show. You know, I think so often, you know, you go to town meeting and this stuff shows up and there's a whole bunch of different things and, you're, and all you're hearing is one, you know, somebody kind of on the stand you're hearing a couple, maybe a couple pot shots from the audience, or but not, not you know, a lot of real detail. So it's so handy 
for folks who are at home, you know, to be really able to hear about this ahead of time, which just leads me to a question. If people just heard a lot of stuff, I mean, you just, I think it was really detailed and that's what people really want to make sure that, you know, appreciate the fact that you're not only looking at item by item, what's the real cost to them. But if they had another question about this, you know, can you, can Chrissy, is there a number that they can call or is there an email? Is there some place that they could ask a question in anticipation of the meeting? Cause you know, as opposed to having to kind of save it up and figure out at the meeting, you know, what, you know, needing to get an, a question answered there. Yeah. Um, so certainly people can call the selectman's office. So that's uh, 508-366-3030. Um, and, you know, we're happy to, to answer questions. We've already received questions. Um, you know, people are obviously concerned about about um, what the, the articles are going to cost them. So um, I would encourage people to call. You can email. Um, you can email me, uh, kwilliams at town.westboro.ma.us. Um, and also, all, there's all of the budget presentations are um, on the town's website, which can also just be looked at and it might be a little easier when you see it, um, you know, on your personal computer. So and maybe we can ask Aiden, yeah. who's kind of behind the screens, <clears throat> our wonderful person, Aiden Horgan here at Westboro Cable um, to actually take that information and put a banner up so that, if, you know, folks need to be contacting you. They can. That's great. Great. That's great. great. Excellent. Yeah. All right, Christy. And that transitions into, transitions into, sorry. Yeah, the crystal ball. All right, so two questions. You have to answer them equally. That's the rule. What are you optimistic about in FY22 as you, you know, because now, right, it's like we're just, I feel like we're still in, well, we are in 21, but we're still yeah. wrapping this up. And yet the budget process, you know, as you told us last time, the selectmen's meeting, you've already said to your department heads, you know, you got to get working on FY22. So what are you worried about and what are you optimistic about? And we have a truth o meter you know, <laughs> you just yeah. put up. No, don't we have one of those things where her nose grows? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think, um, you know, one of the things that is maybe concerning is um, we did do significant cutting in the budget. Um, and so we need to balance how quickly we restore those line items. Um, you know, certainly I would say that, you know, we didn't cut things that weren't impactful. Um, we were able to cut things that, you know, didn't, didn't necessarily reduce services, but, you know, they were things that were impactful. And so um, the superintendent and I have both sent out the message that, you know, everyone's starting point is the budget that they have right now. So the budget that includes all the cuts that we did and that it could, it would be multiple, it'll be multiple fiscal years before budgets are fully restored. Um, at the same time, um, you know, we, we don't want to be stagnant in terms of, of growth. So, um, you know, we had, We've had staffing studies. Um, we had the police staffing study a couple of years ago that's on a trajectory to implement a staffing plan, um, which obviously didn't come completely to fruition in FY21. Um, we just completed a staffing study for non-public safety departments. Um, you know, technologically, we want to grow. Um, we want to imp improve. And so it's sort of balancing that growth with um, uh, with with the need to not sort of jump the taxes and restore the the budgets you know definitely being mindful of the impact of the taxpayer um so you know that's that's something that we're worried about and something we'll certainly be looking at as as the departments are bringing in their um their budget requests for fy22 um at the same time i think westboro is um is lucky in that we we continue to see growth in business. So, um, you know, Amazon continues. Um, that's certainly something that's going to be helpful. Olympus um, in, is, will be, um, has continued to, to develop. Um, we've had other companies come online. Uh, Pulte continues to, to move forward. Um, and so, you know, all of this continued growth and development is, is really positive when we're looking at the impact on the budget. We just had the uh, the grand opening of Astellis, their yes. uh, innovation center, uh, which is just obviously it was a virtual uh, opening, but I mean, unbelievable the work that they're doing. So I was jazzed up, not only because of the work being done here in Westboro, you think about uh, 
uh, life-saving, groundbreaking technologies potentially you know, emanating from Westboro. But I was also like, wow, these people have to eat while they're here, right? And and uh, uh, they're going to buy gas while they're here. And, you know, maybe they're going to, you know, buy a birthday cake while they're here or whatever. So um, I think that there's, um, you know, that economic engine we need to pay particular attention to, uh, you know, in the next, you know, 18 to 24 months and certainly beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. It's great that you're on top of that too, and you know, and that go, that speaks to your desire to 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 make sure that you have an economic development person. Yeah. Because I think especially now, you know, I'm just I make this from the observation of the of the of, the, of, in, of Marlboro, where I live in the Marlboro Economic Development Corporation. In fact, it's exactly where they're going right now, trying to figure out, um, just trying to figure out, given what just happened and the expectations among among folks who are in offices regarding. On the one hand, you know, shrinking the size of their individual offices, but also on the other hand, maybe not having them in Boston and having them out here. Those are those are two ways. Those are, could this could be very positive. That could be very negative. And then trying to even trying to figure out how to repurpose buildings that had been for those kinds of uses. It's, it's a real challenge, and it it really does require trying to get ahead of it because we found you know we, we even we we were doing some stuff here. And we've tried to put together a meeting of the set of the large owners along Donald Lynch Boulevard, for example, where, here in Marlboro, where the mall is and others. And we find some some of the owners that are just not even thinking about it, just saying, mm -hmm. oh, well, everything's fine. And, and But it really takes folks like you and, and, and you know, and you're and folks that are consciously really looking to make sure that folks that 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 the players are looking at these changes. So it's great that you're really looking at it. Yeah. And sometimes the hardest part, I mean, particularly now, right, is just getting everyone together. Where are people? And yeah. and there has been turnover. There have been, you know, um, so to speak, downtown doors that have closed. And so um, I think the economic development coordinator position and then uh, the creation of the community um, uh, Community development director is it just it's so it's so so important. I mean, when you look at the staffing study um, and you see that sort of umbrella approach to bringing all of these uh, related groups under the responsibility of of that person, it it just it, it's kind of like one of those like why haven't we done this already? Right. So, it does. This. And I remember in in Marlboro a while ago when we were originally selling the notion of having an economic development person and you know and now it's just like well duh of course you know yeah. but we kept I remember I remember doing kind of it really kind of speaks to what you were just talking about Christy you know I because we, we, I said look every year you look at the budget and here's the pie you know and here's the police department and here's the fire and that's the one side and then on the other side is the pie and here's where the money comes from and it comes from taxes and it comes from this and that and I said our job is to expand the pie Whose job is it in town to expand the pie? Everybody's got a ton of things to do. Yep. Somebody's got to be in charge of expanding the pie. And that's to, for a community to really understand that is just it's crucial. It's just crucial in the future. Great way to think of it. Absolutely. Yeah, like great. So this is all great news. I know we wanted to save a few minutes, Shelby, because you wanted to talk about kind of what's coming. But yep. this, is a, this is a great update. And, and by the way, just in terms of just the, 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 the nuts and bolts, so what time is town meeting again? And when should people be there? And how is that working in terms of everybody's going to be safe? Can you sure. just talk about that for a few minutes? Yeah. Uh, Chris, do you want to take that or do you want me to take that? Um, I was just going to say town meeting is November 7th at 10 a.m. at the high school, at the Westboro High School. Um, and we we have had now two indoor town meetings during COVID that um, where we work to maintain social distancing, everyone wears masks. Um, you know, I know that we continue to improve every time we do it. And so we're working on um, expanding that layout uh, to invite, you know, to welcome even even more participants in town meeting this time. So that's very exciting. And I and I bet a lot of people who live in Hudson who are trying to figure out how to go to their outdoor town meeting next month. You know, may, may hear about this and envy the fact that uh, there are some towns that have figured this out, you know. Well, we, we kicked that around at length about the ability to do outdoor. But, you know, again, just it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, a couple hours and standing and standing or sitting in freezing cold weather that might be drizzly is is not conducive to slideshows and, and participation. So um, so we're going to do it. We're going to do it safely. And uh 
Um, I would encourage folks to arrive early so they get a seat and um, there'll be multiple rooms available um, and um, we're gonna have a great meeting. Terrific, terrific. Okay. So now, and, and now Shelby to you, yep. you know, any, your, your, so Christy, Shelby gets to, to do a weekly update every week for Frank and Mary, you know, so in case we forgot kind of what's happening next, we yep. can find out, so Shelby. Yes, yeah, so um, very excited about next week's guest. We have uh, Phil Kittredge coming on. Phil, as many of uh, our viewers will know, is um, he's actually been a guest on our show, um, but he uh, and his wife manage the food pantry, but he's not coming on for that. He's gonna come on because he is a published author and he's gonna talk about his book, uh, Westboro. And it's basically a, what I'd sort of call a photo journal of Westboro's history. So uh, he's going to come on and talk about that and uh, great gift for uh, folks looking to support a local business and, and buy a uh, book about Westboro. So he'll be our guest next week. And then um, on Veterans Day, which is the following Wednesday, we'll have uh, Mrs. Uh, Andrea Little on. Uh, I've been working with her um, uh, she actually is the former national cham chairman of the uh, Blue Star Memorial uh, um, Project, I guess. She's also a member of our garden club, and uh, she brought the idea of bringing the Blue Star Memorial here to Westboro. So uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, have approved that. It, we know the placement. We've worked with the other veterans groups in town. So very excited to have her on to talk about why we're doing it, where, and all of that good stuff. And then right before Thanksgiving, the 18th, we're gonna talk about composting, right? Cause you're gonna have all this leftover food. I know it's like, wow, really exciting stuff. Westboro has a new composting program. And a lot of leaves. You have the, right? you know, right? right? And a tremendous number of leaves. Right, so we're gonna talk about composting, the new program here in Westboro. And then on uh, the 25th, we're gonna take the day off because Frank and Mary will be busy making pies. And so it will be a day of rest. So that's November for us. That's that's terrific. So, Chrissy, you can see that Shelby has just really gotten into this. This is wonderful, right? <laughs> because it's true. You know, once again, we really kind of have thought thought about this is really about not issues that are just solely of interest to seniors, but in, issues that a lot of seniors really need want to know about, want to know yeah. about. And so it's 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 really helpful, I think, for a lot of folks. So thanks thanks again, Shelby, for being willing to do this. Thank you, Chrissy, for coming on. And you're so much. I remember last six months ago, you weren't as cheery as you are. <laughs> you just seem a little cheerier today, which is a wonderful, you know, we're all kind of getting through this now, you know? Yes. So thank you so much for coming on. Folks, thank you very much for watching. We hope you find this informative. Once again, if you've got any suggestions about shows that you want to see, talk to Shelby. She's your selectman. You can give her a call, right? Yeah, make me do some work. And we'll, <laughs> that's right. And we will see you next week on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Thanks.